Hey guys, this is Kim, and I am coming back to you with episode number 11 of the Crafty Nomad Podcast. Thank you guys so much for joining me. And uh, today I have show notes, and I have a lot of things uh, surrounding me right now. And so um, without further ado, let's get started. I wanted to start out by saying thank you and welcome. Welcome to everyone who has uh, been on this journey with me so far. Uh, Thank you so much for um, spending some of your precious time uh, with me today. Uh, I I really appreciate it. And thank you also to all of the brand new viewers joining me for the first time. I'm so glad that you decided to check me out. Um, As I said, my name is Kim and I go by the Crafty Nomad because I am all over the place when it comes to my crafting. And today, it's going to uh, prove to be very true because I have all kinds of stuff surrounding me today. Um, you can find me on Ravelry as Pettis Kim Knits, P-E-T-T-I-S-K-I-M-K-N-I-T-S. I'm here on YouTube, Instagram, and Periscope as uh, Pettis Kim, simply Pettis Kim. And I also have an Etsy store, and it's called Ebony Pearl, E-B-O-N-I-E-P-E-A-R-L, and it is all one word. Right now, uh, very little in my store because I'm still trying to figure out where I'm going with the store, and so I think there's like two things, in fact, that might be... uh, You might be able to see two of the things up on the walls, a couple of mixed media art pieces that are showing as available, Uh, but I uh, am not even sure where I'm going, so it's kind of an empty store right now, but at any rate, that is where you can find me. I wanted to start out by giving out a couple of shout outs today. And my first one that I wanted to say uh, shout out to is uh, Kenneth, the Turbo Knitter. Guys, he is back. I am so happy to see him back. Uh, Ken, I'm so happy to see you back and feeling better. Uh, We had gotten the information over on Ravelry. I think that's where I found out uh, that you had uh, been ill and and you had to stop for a while. But I'm so happy to see you back. Um, And... uh, so happy to also see your floss tube uh, videos as well. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about how I went down that rabbit hole <laughs> a little bit later. But um, anyway, Kenneth, uh, welcome back uh, to the community. You were definitely missed and so glad uh, that you are doing better and definitely continuing to pray for good health for you. So welcome, welcome. Um, The next person that I wanted to give a shout out to is a Periscope newbie. She did her first uh, episode and it is called, uh, her podcast is called Pins Needles. That is P-I-N apostrophe S Needles. And uh, she's amazing. She did her first episode and I think what, uh, she does a little bit of everything. I believe she uh, crochets. I believe she knits. She also sews. And um, the reason why she stood out to me is because uh, she started this project. Um, I believe she started it last year. And uh, she was going through a tough time. And she talks about it all on her video. So you guys should go and check her out. But going through her own tough tough time made her create this charity project for herself to help her her to be uh, outward focused instead of focusing on what was going on in her life she decided to give back and uh, anybody who does that uh, deserves all kinds of shout outs but what's so interesting about her project is that she decided to do a marathon and what she means by that is she is going to knit or crochet up a marathon's worth of yarn and give all the items away. She started in, I believe, July 31st of last year. And at this point, the girl is nine miles, over nine miles in on her uh, marathon. And just so you know, I wrote it down. Uh, where's the number? Okay. 46,145 yards in a marathon. So her plan is basically to knit up for um, over 45,000 yards of yarn and give all of the objects away. 
How incredible is that? I mean, that is just inspiring. So I just wanted to give her a shout out and um, and and just ask you guys to go and check her out because I mean, she's in her in her podcast. She's not sure if she's gonna have another episode. I really hope you do. Her first name is Kayla, and again, it is called Pins Needles. Uh, podcast and I will link her here and I will link her uh, in the the Ravelry thread as well for, for this um, show but please check her out and leave her a comment, give her some thumbs up and some likes so she'll come back because truly uh, I believe that we need people like her in this community, more and more people like that um, and you know we have a great community so why not add to it uh, and then Okay, so I'm going to briefly, I think, touch on a little bit that I have sort of fallen down the floss tube rabbit hole. Yes, I have. I mentioned it at the last uh, podcast that I did a couple weeks ago that I started um, doing a little bit of cross stitch. I am a total newbie. I believe like when I first moved to California almost 17 years ago, I may have tried to do a little bit of cross stitch. And I, can't, I remember buying a big kit. Uh, and I, hmm, I'm not sure what happened to that. I probably sold it in the garage sale or something back then. But anyway, um, I have been looking at so many floss tube, uh, videos and who did I come across but a woman named Mondot Stitcher. And I think it's either Mondot Stitcher or Mundot Stitches. And of course, I cannot read my own handwriting, so I will link it correctly below. But guess who this lady is? If you don't already know, I know that a lot of you, if you're watching me, for sure, you have heard of uh, Sword of a Knitter. His name is Josh. And he's an incredible uh, knitwear designer and knitter and really enjoyable to watch. This is his mother. Mondot Stitches is his mother, and you guys, she has 13 kids, and yeah, just, I think Josh is probably one of the oldest and the only one that's not living at home, according to her most recent video that I watched, but anyway, I wanted to give a shout out to her and to Josh, um, I know that neither one of them probably watch my little podcast, but I just thought it was so interesting that this mother and son are both YouTube crafters. So wanted to shout out those and point those out to you guys if you're interested at all in uh, cross stitch. Uh, there are so many incredible people. Again, like uh, I mentioned, Ken the Turbo Knitter. So many of you guys I know watch him, and um, he's also now doing floss tube. So. Um, it's incredible to see the work that people do, guys, and uh, I'm just putting my baby toe in. Uh, I am not, you know, uh, going to be doing those gigantic, pro beautiful projects that a lot of people do, but um, I think they make uh, cute little wall hangings, and it's just a nice, relaxing thing to do. So I'm going to get started with that. And so, I'm going to tell you something that I have learned from the uh, Floss Tube community. Um, they do something that they call, a lot of them do what they call rotations. A lot of them take their projects and they just rotate them out. They will work on, some people do the same project all week. Some people do, you know, one project a week. And then every time they update, they can show you, uh, the progress that they have made on those projects. And, uh, I am, you know, again, all over the place, all over the place with my crafting. I have a lot of projects. And sometimes I have those that languish because I just don't give them any time and I want to start something new and blah, blah, blah. And I'm still suffering from that. But I decided to give this whole rotation thing a try. Now, my rotation is going to include all different kinds of projects, which is a little bit, uh, excuse me, different from them, where uh, they have um, pretty much all cross-stitch projects. Well, I'm going to rotate all of my projects, and so I decided to try that over the last couple of weeks. So what I did was I devoted three days uh, to each project because I don't want to get bored. I don't want to overtax any muscles doing the same thing for a week. Um, and I don't want to get tired of a project. So I thought three days 
and rotating through. I think I have, I started out with four, but I added another one. See, I couldn't help it. I still wanted to start a new one. So I did. And so I'm going to start out uh, with showing you my cross stitch. Um, I don't do a lot of it. Uh, and... I am new at it, and you can barely tell, but uh, I found this pattern on Etsy. I got it from a seller, and her name is, or the name of the seller is Magic Stitching. And I don't know if you can see that, but I mentioned it a little bit last week, and I couldn't uh, find it. So I'm hoping that if I bring that right up, you can see that. Otherwise, I'm going to link it below. And this is the vintage typewriter that I told you guys that uh, I was uh, doing for my brother-in-law. His birthday is in July, so I got plenty of time. But uh, when I showed it to you guys last week, uh, I barely had anything but that orange, that bright orange part done. And now, you can see I changed the colors. This thing is pink and gray. And I thought I would make it more orange and yellows for him because uh, I thought that was just a tad bit more something he would appreciate other than pink and so here you go and uh, hopefully you can see that uh, this is in my Q-Snap or this is a, I, I, it's not a brand name Q-Snap this is a loops and threads uh, frame but uh, it's, I think it's a Q-Snap um, you know I'm new uh, and I tried to make uh oh a little needle minder uh, the magnet that I have is not strong enough so it won't hold it but let's see uh, it's my thread uh, yeah it's not gonna hold it because my magnet so it holds it a little bit probably gonna fall off but I need stronger magnets but uh, I wanted to try and make some so I did so that's my cross stitch my next uh, whip that I am going to show you uh, is which one? Okay, so my socks. And those are being um, held in my uh, uh, the Silver Shed USA bag. It's like stained glass owls, which I love. You've been seeing this one for a while, but, uh, so last time we podcast, I showed you I had one finished, and I was just at a point of being ready to add the afterthought heel portion, and so as you can see, I have done that. This is, that light yellow strip is where the afterthought heel section is gone, and you can see I'm all the way up here, and I have started the ribbing. So I'm just about done with that one next time we podcast. I better have this done with my rotation. I think it's going to work because um, this, yeah, I did all of this over the three-day period. And because, I, you know, I work full-time and I got a little uh, six-and-a-half, six-and-three-quarters-year-old. So I, you know, knit when I, and do all this crafting when I can. And so I don't get a whole lot of time, but um, I got a lot done on that one. So it's really easy, just a vanilla sock pattern. So it's just, you know, very quick, and this should be done the next time we see each other. My next little whip uh, that I wanted to talk about is my sapphire wrap. And I think I brought the pattern. Yeah. So this one is from this book, Short Road Tunisian Fashion. This is a leisure arts book, and the patterns are by Kim Guzman. And she is like the queen of Tony, Tun, Tunisian crochet. And almost everything you find, it, she has her hand on it. So uh, here is a picture of the wrap there. And uh, I have made a lot of progress on it. And I'll give you another picture of it here. Hopefully you can see that. And I am doing mine out of Red Heart uh, Unforgettable Yarn. 
It is living in my cupcake bag, and this bag is pretty full because it's getting pretty big. I'm using the colorway Candied, and you know that is 100% acrylic. And um, I'm using the uh, Knitter, Knitter's Pride Interchangeable um, Crochet Hooks. And I have uh, gotten to the lace section here on this one. And it is, oh boy, what's that? Okay, hopefully that wasn't there the whole time, but oh well. Uh, as you can see, it is getting pretty big and it's fairly long. And I just love how it's working out. So, the last time we spoke, I think I was like, I was pretty far up, but I am getting close to being done. The lace section of this is um, seven rows. And each row in Tunisian has two steps. So, it's really more like 14 rows. And uh, I have done two of the seven, so I'm just about uh, done with that. So hopefully, with this rotation thing, next time I see you guys, this will be done too. And uh, Tunisian goes really fast. Excuse me for leaning. Uh, but Tunisian goes really fast. This represents uh, just over two balls of the Red Heart Unforgettable Yarn. And um, I'm into the third ball, but it will not be all used up. But crochet really, you know, takes up a lot of yarn. So uh, that's that for that. It's coming along nicely. That's one, that one is one I'm going to keep for myself. I think almost all of this I'm keeping for myself except for one thing. Uh, well, the cross stitch I'm not. Uh, my... I know, it's a little missing thing. Because last time I was just so excited to just get an episode out because it had been so long that I didn't really do any show notes and consequently I forgot a whole lot of things and which is fine. So this episode will be a little bit longer probably. Just FYI. I should have said that at the beginning. Um so that's the sapphire wrap. And then I brought out the gallatin, and that's been what I've worked on the last couple of days until I got sort of inspired to do something else. So I worked on this yesterday, and today I will work on it some more, and then tomorrow, and then I'm going to switch out the rotation. So here's the gallatin. It, she won't, it won't look much different from the last time you saw it. Uh, Cause I yesterday I had to just figure out where I was and remember the pattern, but wasn't that hard to figure it out? And it doesn't look like I screwed it up too badly. Uh, but there it is. It's worse than weight. Uh, using um, 100% acrylic uh, loops and threads, and I believe this is unforgettable in a mustardy colorway. I really like how this is going. You see that pattern? This is a very easy knit. Very easy. This is a free pattern on Ravelry. And the designer, her name is Chris Basta. I believe this pattern is in a couple of different languages because I'm not sure where she's from, but it's free. The Ravelry link uh, sends you to her actual blog. And, um, yeah, it's a great little pattern. I can't wait to get that one done. And I'm also going to keep that one for, for myself. So. And that one is being housed in my knit and stitch bits bag. Uh, this is an Etsy seller out of Australia. And I really love that bag. I just had to get that. My, even though I can make them, this one just too cute to pass up. <sighs> So I think that was all of the things that I have been working on since um, last we spoke. And then I decided, um, uh, after, uh, okay, let me back up. I watched uh, Kayla, uh, who I mentioned earlier with her um, marathon of uh, 
her marathon of, of, of knitting and crocheting and giving away um, all of these items for charity. And I thought that was so great. But I watched it on Sunday after I had come from church. And at church, one of the things that they talked about was figuring out um, what good deeds, you know, I am supposed to be. You as an individual, what is it that you're going to bring to the world? And I always feel like anything that I love, anything that, any passion that I have that was put in me, you know, by the creator, by God. And um, not to get all uh, preachy, but I really do want to figure out how to give back through all that he has given me and to use the talents that I have because that's going to make me, you know, the happiest. And so I've been dealing with this in my head for a long time. And then I saw uh, Kayla's video and I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I volunteered and did some crafting and dropped off some some in, some fun crafty items uh, a couple years ago on Martin Luther King uh, Day, which today is. And at my church, we usually make this a day of service uh, opportunities to go. And I think actually probably a whole bunch of people all over the country make this a day of service and a day to give back. Um, uh, in order to honor uh, Martin Luther King's memory. And so uh, we did this thing where we went to Ronald McDonald House. And if you're familiar with it, it is a place where families can stay whose kids have come in. Uh, and they have them all over the country, I think. But the one that I'm talking about is the one that's very near to Children's Hospital here in um, Southern California and, and Los Angeles. And so... Uh, I got a chance to, to make some cards for the families and me and a bunch of people. It was one of our service projects and I was one of the people, me and my husband and my son, and we dropped everything off, cards and cookies. And I've always wanted to figure out how I can still be involved with that particular um, nonprofit because um, I, I don't, my, my child is healthy, healthy, healthy. But I do know what it's like um, to be in pain over over your children and um, just the, the whole thought of, you know, having a sick child, man, it could just move me to tears just thinking about the possibility of it. So I really want to do something to support. So I have decided that what I'm going to do uh, based on doing some research, knowing what they require, and I still got to do a little more research because <laughs> I'm not 100% sure this is going to work, but what I want to do is make afghans that these families can have that they can take wrap around themselves like a warm hug while they're going through a really challenging time so i have decided that that's what i'm going to do i have a whole bunch of stash like like acrylic yarns and they will soften up once i wash them but also this is something easy for them they have sick kids they don't need anything that is a luxury yarn for something like this and so i decided that i'm going to make at least 10 of uh, Afghans to donate to the to Ronald McDonald House. Now, again, I don't 100% know yet because I just decided this yesterday if they will even take them. But if they don't, I will find another way to serve them and I will find somewhere else to give these um, Afghans to. So I found this incredible free pattern on Ravel. No. Um, I did find it on Ravel Ravelry, but it is a uh, lion bread free pr pattern and it is uh, called the log cabin afghan and I have been wanting to make one of these since I saw when I first started watching pen hooks and needles podcast with uh, Talia and Marlisha um, great great podcast by the way um, uh, Marlisha Lady Farnico was uh, making her own log cabin cabin pattern and you know very familiar with the pattern from quilting um not that i'm this incredible quilter but that is uh definitely a traditional um type of quilt block and so uh that's what i'm doing so let me show you uh first of all this is one of the first project bags i made and it is jimongous <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. Uh, but I wanted to have like a sweater slash blanket bag. And so I made this one. And it's got uh, beautiful little elephants and flowers all over it. And I lined it with this hot paint. 
and inside is all of the thread and you know it stands it will stand like a little basket and so here is what I'm doing with a bunch I just pulled I just pulled whatever I can find I pulled six colors because that's what the pattern called for and um, you know it's gonna be scrappy and wild looking but I still like it and here is the beginning So I think you can see that I got I have uh, solids and one variegated in there and um, it's a little wacky but I think it's gonna be great once I, as I get it going okay. so you just keep going around and around until you have nine uh, uh, layers outside of sorry until you have nine layers outside of this center square so right now I have what four at the most one two three four yeah so and then you edge it and you're done and the only thing about this which is why I don't do a whole lot of color work is this look at all these look at all those ends that are gonna have to be woven in so I'm thinking of uh, just uh, actually stopping at some point and just starting to weave them in before I get all you know so all done and have to do it all at the end so anyway those are my five projects that I'm going to talk about today so I have no FOs guys but I'm getting close so next time I should have at least one hopefully two um so Let's go on to uh, stash enhancement. I don't have any new yarn. I haven't bought any yarn. And um, what I'm trying to do this year is kind of use up uh, a lot of the the things that I have. So I'm going to try to work from that. But, you know, I'm not saying I'm not going to buy anything, but I just haven't for this podcast. So... <laughs> So let me show you what I do have. I have a couple of, I think, what, three cross stitch kits that I want to share with you. That I got. This one is a Dimensions uh, kit. It is counted cross stitch. It will be done on 18 count Ada. And I'm actually doing this one um, uh, for a friend. And this one, I believe, is called A Dog's Love. And you know, I'm, I'm generally a kit girl, so I love that they have everything here. Probably how all beginners are. And then I got, um, and, and by the way, I had gotten some of this stuff is, again, you know, Christmas presents that I just didn't show that last video or, you know, from birthday money and that kind of thing. And then I found, I wanted to make a Christmas ornament, so I found another Dimensions kit. This is called Hope Ornament. And that's another little kit on 14 count Ada and it has everything you need to finish it with a felt I don't know if it has uh, yeah it even has the little wire to hang it so that'll be cool something to have on the tree and then I got this one and both of these I think I ordered both of these from Amazon and this one I went to Walmart over the weekend. This is a Janlin kit. And it is everything I need. It's called Love Simply. And it's also on 14 count Ada cloth. So that's that for that. Then, uh, let's see. Um, a few more cross stitchy things. I'll just stay within the craft. I got uh, two different brands of Ada cloth for some of the things that the patterns that I ordered off of um, Etsy where I have to actually kit everything up myself. So that. Also got um, this floss. This is DMC. And uh, yeah. I don't even know what colors you would, what group this is, but 16 different colors. And then I got two more Q-Snaps, Loops and Threads brand, and they just call them uh, Plastic Snap Frame. 
And this one is uh, 11 by 11 square. And this one is 8 by 8. Those are for the smaller projects. And I think that's all the cross stitch stuff, right? Yep. Then I got a couple of little things for paper crafting, which, um, sorry, I'm going to lean. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. So for paper crafting, I got, um, I showed you guys the journals in the, that I made, uh, my December daily, um, Fodori. And so with those, you need elastic. So I got anticipating making more of those as gifts. Um, and then I just got some wood um, embellishments from the dollar fifty band of Michaels. Thought those were cute for mixed media projects. Dollar fifty can't beat it for four different pieces. And then I also use this kind of metal embellishment on mixed media projects from the dollar fifty band. And then I thought this was so cute. A little rubber stamp for a dollar fifty in this mason jar. They um, hadn't had this one. They had a mason jar, but it had candy in it. And um, I do have another mason jar stamp, but it's longer. And uh, this one is just, like some more squat and fat. So I got that for $1.50. Can't beat it. And then, guys, of course, I am um, unfortunately been watching the CHA uh, Craft and Hobby Association um, trade show. Lots of people that I watch on YouTube went, so I watched a lot of videos. And of course, now I want to learn how to use um, encaustic paints, like painting with wax. And so you need a tool for that. So I got one. <sighs> All over the place, guys. <laughs> And I got a little bit of the uh, clear encaustic wax paint. And then I ordered uh, some color paint as well, um, but it hasn't arrived yet. And you could actually use that thing with crayons too. So we'll see how that all goes. Now the yarny related stash that I didn't show you before was I got a yarn ball winder. This is uh, Loops and Threads. Okay. And again, another one of my gift card birthday gift treats. And I, oh, and I have to tell you guys, now I never win anything, but I won a twice so far now on Instagram. And I won a beautiful braid of fiber for spinning. And I forgot to show that I had this at the last, uh, uh, podcast episode but I want this beautiful braid I'm so intimidated to spin it I don't want to mess it up and I forgot to bring over who I got it from but I will link it below wonderful uh, seller and I believe this is uh, 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 can't remember can't remember what it is but I love the colors, and um, I'm grateful for that. Couldn't believe I won, actually. And then, I think, um, the last few things I wanted to show you as far as stash is concerned are, I got a few magazines. I got, not a magazine, I don't know what that is. Uh, I got Knit Simple, and I really like those color work mittens. And, um, so a few things in here I like. I, I like that. Let's see. Oh, okay. I really like that. You can see that. I really like this magazine because, you know, it's it's not overly expensive. It's $6.99. But look at it. It's a lot of cool patterns. I mean, $6 and I've already, $7 and I've already seen that quickly four things that I would love to make I definitely want to make some mittens I want to make a sweater this year too but who knows who knows if I'll be able to do that so this one looks like a lot of good stuff in that one then I got uh, a crochet one um, mostly because I like that crochet world 
I really like that sweater. And so I was joking around with my husband. I said, I'm going to make a Rhinebeck sweater. I don't know if I'm ever going to Rhinebeck, but hey, I'm going to make a Rhinebeck sweater. And maybe that'll be my Rhinebeck sweater. I thought this was actually cute, too. <laughs> because it is, let me see if I can find a really good uh, picture of this. It's called the Twice as Nice um, Necklace. And I don't know if you could see that. But it's a necklace, and I mean, I'm not into this kind of crochet, crochet jewelry, except that, you see those embroidery um, scissors in there? It's like a little pouch. And since I'm starting to do cross stitch, I need some of those little scissors, and the little pouch would be great. So I might try that. So I love the sweater. I love, oh, and I, there's a hat in here that I thought was uber cute. Here's the sweater again in all its glory. I'm not showing anything now. Okay. So, can I just say, you know, when people show patterns and they go to great lengths to uh, cover up, that when they're showing something that they paid for, they go to great lengths to cover up the uh, actual pattern. And I'm like, wow, what ninja knitter can like actually get the pattern like do people really do that if I accidentally show the pattern are there people out there who actually will like screenshot it and steal the pattern who would go through all of that um that's amazing I think you should that's a little bit crazy <laughs> but anyway here you go I love this it's it's a um bookmark look at that I'm definitely doing that so cute. I hope I'm showing these good. I wanted to show one more thing in this one. There was a lot of good stuff in this one, so this is a worth it magazine for me. Um, okay, I'm trying not to trying to be like everybody else and not show the pattern. Uh, but look at that cute slouch hat. Some cute, cute items in this book, in this magazine. So I saw a lot of things in here I like, so this one was totally worth it. And then, of course, since I am down the rabbit hole, I had to get just cross stitch. <laughs> so uh, I'm excited about this one um, because I can learn and read about this new thing I'm learning how to do. And there's really cool stuff in here. Now, this right here is the only one I'm going to point out. This is a collaboration between a chalk artist and an embroidery uh, cross stitch designer. Look at that. This is the chalk, chalk drawing right here. And this is the designer's interpretation of it in cross stitch. Amazing, right? This is going to be a series that they do for each season. Um, seasons in chalk. And this is winter. So that is very cool. And I uh, definitely may give that one a try. So, anyway. Those are my magazines. And I think, let me just check my little notes. I wanted to show you guys. For the log cabin, uh, it, it's hard for me. I've already had to rip it out trying to keep up with exactly what order I'm supposed to be doing my colors in. So what I've decided to do, because I see a lot of people doing this, and I will transfer this stuff to Ravelry, but I'm going to start out by keeping things in a notebook. And so what I did was I just stapled in each one of my colors, put the corresponding letter by it, and then I have my sequence down there. And again, this is a free pattern, so it doesn't matter if you get that. It's not the pattern anyway. Um, so this is how I'm keeping up with it. I even put my start date down there so that when I transfer it over to Ravel, actually I already started a page for this. Um, so I'm going to try to do better about Ravelry this year. So I was at Barnes & Noble getting the Just Cross Stitch magazine and getting the crochet magazine that I wanted. And, uh, of course, everything is on sale. So I got a pack of three um, little journals. And I thought they were so cute. They're very Christmas sweatery. But that makes them very stitchery. <laughs> so very appropriate. So I am using these to sort of be my logs for my, pro my, my uh, projects. And then I'm going to also use it for show notes, which is what I've done. And I think uh, that is everything that I wanted to show you guys. Oh, 
uh, I wanted to show you uh, another Etsy pattern that I did also get in my stash. So let me pull that up for you. I, I showed you guys already the, um, I showed you the typewriter, which I'm already working on. But I also purchased two from a seller called the Tiny Modernist. Uh, the first one I want to show you is, uh, I don't know if I've already said this, but I'm actually from Chicago. I have only lived in Southern California for uh, the last 17 years of my life and uh, almost 17 years in April. Uh, but I am a Chicago and I am a Midwestern girl. And so, uh, look at this. I totally had to get this and I'm making this for me to sit um, on my desk at work, I think is what I'm going to do with that. And the seller again is uh, the Tiny Modernist. And a really good uh, workmate of mine is pregnant and expecting a baby boy very soon. And so this is something, a birth record that I want to make for him. Uber cute. So those, I think that's all of my stash. And so now. Let's talk about, finally, I am going to do a giveaway. The last I checked, I have 195 subscribers on YouTube. OMG. And I have 38 <laughs> subscribers in my, or 38 members in my, the Crafty Nomad podcast Ravelry group. And so I think it's high time that I do a giveaway. So... This is going to be a very crafty, craft all the things, crafty, nomadic giveaway um, in celebration of achieving 200 uh, subscribers. I'm only five away, so I'm going to go ahead and start that contest thread over on Ravelry, but you can also, you will also be entered into the drawing just by leaving a comment, uh, a positive one. <laughs> down below um, down below the YouTube video on YouTube and so I'm gonna show you guys um, this this uh, contest I will run this contest right now I think I'm gonna run it all the way through February 14th and uh, I will announce the winner on the very next uh, video that I do after February 14th so how do you enter you subscribe to my to my um, YouTube channel join the crafty nomad podcast group so you can leave a comment on the thread of this episode um, tell me how you found me tell me something about yourself um, leave a great comment on the YouTube video tell me what you like to do any kind of a positive comment will count as an entry if you are following me on YouTube and you are part of my group I will give you two entries okay so let me tell you um, what um, the prize package will look like because this is all going to one person okay so I am going to include Oh, sorry, I'm leaving. So, I'm the Crafty Nomad, so this prize package is going to have some of everything in it. Uh, I'm including Lion Brand, one, one ball of sockies. One ball makes a whole pair of socks. This is in the colorway Lemon Drop. It is 75% wool and 25% nylon, so that's one part of the prize package. I am, for my sewing enthusiasts, including a, um, this is a sampler of 25 by 5 minky squares. So you can see it. You can make a cute little baby quilt with that. I'm also including a Dimensions cross stitch. This is a stamped cross stitch kit. And this is called the Serenity Prayer. So that's in the package. 
I am also, for my paper crafters out there, including a 6x6 paper pad from Heidi Grace Designs. Brand new, never used. And I don't think, if you can see those colors, God bless you, but um, you may not, I'm sorry. Uh, they're pretty though. I am also including a set of star stickers and a set of letter stickers and finally a set of watercolor paints. In addition to that, I believe, if I can figure out how to do it, this will also include a $5 gift certificate to Ravelry so you can buy a pattern or it'll be a $5 giftable pattern some kind of way. But that is, I believe, the whole package unless I find some other cute things I want to throw in there um, while we are building up uh, to the actual drawing. So... I am going to have my first giveaway, so please give me some thumbs up. Leave me some comments. Uh, join my group over there on um, Ravelry. But again, you can leave a comment down below on YouTube, and you will also be entered into the drawing. I'm very excited. I hope I get a lot of entries. Thank you guys so much. I think, Whew, let's see. Uh, I think that's everything for today. I'm not sure how long this video is, but thank you if you have hung in there with me all this time. I really appreciate it. This is probably my longest video so far, but I really appreciate you joining me. I love spending time with you guys. I love, love, love this crafty community, and I'm so grateful that I, I jumped in and now I'm a part of it. At any rate, uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of the week, and... Um, that you keep it crafty. Bye, guys.